everyone, Richard here. I first saw Raphael's album Adana, shown here, at the National Museum in Washington when I was still a teenager. It's a breathtaking painting. I thought then, and still do today, that the painting has some sort of geometric substructure. So after the feeling that I might be onto something with the Palma Vecchio painting in the previous video, an exploration of the Alba Madonna was next on my list. As with the Vecchio, using Photoshop, I started overlaying lines where I felt there might be underlying structure. For this one, I quickly piled up lines to see what might develop. What became obvious fairly quickly was the feeling of a triangle encompassing the upper body of Mary, her left arm and down her left leg, as well as the body of the Christ child, like this. As with the Vecchio painting, I started to refine these lines with single but wider lines in the most obvious places. Starting with a line running down Mary's left forearm and left leg and foot, then adding another thinner line running along her right arm, parallel to the first. I then added one along Mary's left upper arm and the back of her head, and another thinner line from Mary's forehead along the Christ child's side and leg, and two more precise lines, one where the horizon line would be, another following St. John's cross. At this point, the lines defining that initial triangle are there, A, B, and C, as well as the line running along Mary's right arm, D, which is conspicuously parallel to B, and the horizon line, E, and cross, F. I then saw that if I made another line, G, parallel to line A, it could run along that obvious crease in Mary's skirt, through the center of St. John's head from chin to the top of his head, and nearly meet the horizon line on the upper left. If I tightened it up and rotated it slightly so that it had the same angle as B, though reversed, it fit those three points near perfectly. I then rotated A so it was again parallel to the new line G, and tightened it up as well. The same could then be done with line B, tightening it up and making it run down the side of Mary's arm and leg so that it would meet the horizon line in the edge of the painting in the top right and line C at the bottom left. This makes lines B and G mirror one another. Finally, I adjusted D to make it again parallel to B. These videos give the sense that the geometry developed quickly and easily but this often took a great deal of time. I was often exploring several paintings at a time, switching back and forth from one to another as things developed or not. I don't now recall at what point working on this one. I saw the obvious, but I do recall a bit of a thrill. I'd reverse engineered from the painting a near perfect equilateral pentagram. All I had to do was add another line, mirroring C, and there it is. I then spent some time learning to construct a pentagon, one that enclosed a pentagram and those inside a circle, like this. Even with simple tools, a straight edge and compass, I found this easy enough to do once I learned how. Here then is that pentagon pentagram circle fit onto the painting. But this geometry doesn't yet explain two important lines that were generated from the painting and that enclosed the upper body of Mary lines A and D. But if another upside-down pentagon pentagram is added, line D is nearly accounted for. Line A is still missing from this geometry, but we can add it by drawing a line from the two points marked with an X where the two pentagons cross. Interestingly, if a line mirroring that one is added, it runs nicely along the tops of the heads of Mary, the Christ child, and St. John. So there we have it, a complex geometry generated or reverse engineered from the painting that does, to my mind at least, follow and perhaps explain some of the compositional decisions for this wonderful painting. But, as with the previous Palmavecchio painting, it doesn't quite fit as I might have hoped. If, however, as with the Vecchio, I enlarge the geometry 
in this case mostly toward the upper left, it can be made to fit more sharply, nearly perfectly fitting the side of the Christ child in Mary's forehead, as well as Mary's left arm, hand, leg, and foot, her upper left arm and back of her head, as well as the side of her right arm. And one of the horizontal lines is now exactly where the horizon line should be. This painting was originally on a circular wood panel, but sometime between 1836 and 1931, during its time at the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg, Russia, it was transferred from its deteriorating panel to a square canvas. Could the painting have been cut down in this way during that process? And might the painting, originally, have looked more like this? Again, this is only conjecture. I'm not claiming proof of anything. I will do more research on this, but in the meantime, if you know anything about the possible alteration of the size of this painting, please let me know. Oh yes, one more thing. Having to do with that curious building in the background in the upper right and its oddly shaped roof. The sides of the roof are perfectly parallel to line A over Mary's left arm, the upper right side of the Pentagon. Significant? I wonder. It makes you think. So the Vecchio painting and now the Raphael, two delightful paintings with geometries that fit better than I could have expected. A good start, I think. Now, please join me for the next two videos, where I'll be exploring Botticelli's Venus and Primavera, two paintings which I think might share a related geometry. That exploration turned out to be an interesting one. It led me to all kinds of new and unexpected geometries, including a unique way to create a golden rectangle. For information on my own work, please visit my website, at rtdavis.com. You can also find me on Instagram at Richard Thomas Davis Artist. Thanks for joining me.